desk now, sort of. <laughs> it's still just a frame, but this thing just came in a clamp this morning. Um, it looks pretty good. I spent a little bit of time just cleaning things up, hand planting back some of these edges that were a little bit high after glue up. So I had kind of roughly cut, this is one of the drawer sides. Um, so you can see that it needs to be cut down just a little bit. So I'm gonna cut these down. And then I also have my drawer faces here that need to get cut down a little bit. So I'm gonna be doing that. And then I'm also going to mill and glue up some panels for the bottoms of the drawers out of cedar. I love using cedar for the bottoms of drawers because it looks really cool. It gives it some contrast. And also it just smells amazing every time you open the drawer. So all of the drawer parts are cut to length. They've got the right angles and everything cut on them. And I've gone ahead and added some grooves for the bottoms of the drawers as well. Um, I've got the stock for the bottom of the drawers here. I always use cedar because it smells amazing and it also adds some contrast. I'll probably cut those um, in a couple of days once I get these drawers put together. I'm gonna be cutting dovetails on them. Notice with these drawers, and I've been very, very meticulous with this, is every single thing is labeled to fit together. So there's a three degree slant, or cut rather, on the front here to match the front of the drawer, how it'll sit flush with the leg out here. Quarantine wire. What I've got for today is I'm going to be attempting a barley twist. So I made one not too long ago at Poplar that worked out okay, but I'm going to try it at a walnut. I think it's going to carve a little bit differently. Um, I started with just an X on either end. If you align a straight edge with the corners of a piece, you can find the exact center really quickly without any measuring just by throwing the X on here. So we're going to mount it on the lathe and then mark it up for um, the pattern that I want to turn.
We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I have got to give a shout out to my oldest sister and my brother-in-law. Um, they gave me an incredibly generous gift this Christmas. Um, and that is what you guys have been seeing me set up right here. This absolute beast of a setup. So they gave me this crazy dual monitor setup, which has been so incredibly helpful with making videos, which is what I'm at right now. And also it has this nice shiny light up <laughs> computer down here. This thing is incredible and it has been such a huge help. So just a huge shout out to um, my sister Hannah and her husband Caleb for, for giving this to me. I love you. Now back to our show. What's up guys? So I've got the drawers well underway. Um, this is one of them right here. We've got those houndstooth dovetails coming together nicely. So the next order of business here is to make some handles or drawer pulls. And you could just go buy some metal ones, but I prefer to make my own. Um, I've got one that I just thought up and created a couple years ago, and I've kept this template ever since. So I've got this one. I've also got a smaller one. So I've got a bunch of different woods. I've got some cherry, walnut, maple, and then also sycamore, which is a little bit more colored than maple and has this crazy figuring to it. So using these two router bits, um, my table saw, I am going to create some drawer pulls. Step one, use a quarter inch round over bit to round over the end grain on each side of the piece here. There's the end profile I'm looking for. Now I'm just going to make a whole bunch more. Bunch of stock is cut here. This should probably make, I don't know, 25 or 30 handles. I just like these handles and I want to go ahead and make a bunch of them while I'm at it. But one thing that I learned to speed this process along of making these handles is to go ahead and sand the blanks at this point. So all the little inconsistencies and the router marks and any burning and planer marks on here are just gone so you don't have these tiny little faces once we start to cut this up into smaller pieces. So these handles do take a bit of work. They take a couple steps, but basically here's the rundown. Um, I take one of these blanks and turn it into something like this. So to do that, a lot of tools get used. We've got a drill with a countersink bit in it. Um, I have a router with a flush trim bit. We've also got my template right here. And then also we will be using the table saw with a crosscut sled and a special setup I've got right here as well as my impact driver, wherever I put that thing.
like that, we have a handle. Needs a bit of sanding, but that's pretty much it. I'll pilot some holes in either end here to attach it to the drawer face, but this is the this is the basic shape. So let's rinse and repeat. Spoiler alert, the camera died in the middle of filming, so this is a day or two later. Got a couple sycamore ones, they're really hard to tell apart from those guys, but a bunch of these really cool handles, I like these a lot. The maple ones right here are what we're gonna be using. I've actually got one drawer glued up at this point. Y'all will see that process in the next vlog as well as finishing our desk right here. So drawer fitting and all that is coming along, but these handles will be going on this drawer right here for a little bit of contrast, just like that. Few more projects coming along. We have a slab over here on the CNC that will probably be in a vlog a couple weeks from now, but this thing is just utterly massive. So stay tuned for that thing getting wheeled down. It's gonna be quite a fun process. I'll see y'all next week.